And joining Nolan and me now is our good friend Craig Folly, who's the host of the Craig Folly Show at WDET Radio. Tell me, what do you see, Craig, as the top priority for the new Duggan administration? That's a loaded question. There are so many different <laughs> places he needs to address Everything, right off the right? bat. I, I think the most important thing that he can do is put together a plan that people can actually look at and see some of the results of. If that's a, a way of getting more police officers on the streets right off the bat, so people at least feel that there's an attempt being made to address that huge issue, I think that's that's really, really important for him to do, just to show them that he actually cares about the neighborhoods and their safety. That's, that's number one. Right. Yeah, I agree. He's got to present a sense of urgency, a sense of motion and action, because uh, people are leaving. They, they've lost, lost confidence in the city. They don't feel safe. And they're not going to stay if they don't see some hope. Do you feel like uh, Chief Craig has already sort of kick-started that sense of urgency with these raids, with some of the more high-profile statements he's made, well, or do we need more? Yeah, we talked to Mike Duggan about that. I'm, I'm not sure that one, one or two raids is enough. I think people need to look out their door and see cops driving by. And I, I think he, whatever Presences, he's doing, yeah. he needs to crow about it a little more so people know, both, both the people who live here and the criminals, know that there's been a change. And I don't know that, that I, as Duncan said, I don't know that it's, it's gotten down into the neighborhoods yet, the sense that something has changed. Well, and Chief Craig seems to still be in this sort of discovery phase about exactly uh, how well, big the problem is. The, the few times that I've had him on the program talking about it, there's, I don't want to say deer in the headlights feel to it, but I think he's somewhat astounded as to the level of the problem yeah, that he's well, dealing with I think with everybody here. gets shocked when they actually come here and but get he on the ground to snap and out of that see pretty how fast. bad yeah. things are. But if, if you look at the lawlessness in, this, in yeah. the city and the number of people who commit crimes and, and they never get prosecuted, if we had a multi-agency task force, as, as Duggan suggested in, during our interview, if we had a multi-agency task force attacking unsolved serious crimes so that all these people who've been getting away with murder and other crimes now all of a sudden somebody's knocking on their door Someone's and dragging afraid. them in yeah. it would send an important message yeah I, I think so too and he also needs to prioritize which neighborhoods are going to get that kind of treatment those neighborhoods that are on the cusp of either failing or succeeding focus on those places like yeah, go there uh, and tip East the English balance. Village, sure. exactly, tip the balance, make those places so you don't lose those middle class residents. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Wayne County. Uh, <laughs> big headline in the Detroit News last week that said, uh, you know, the deficit is getting worse. Um, why don't we see an emergency manager in Wayne County the way we do in Detroit? Is it well, just politics? I, I think there's a couple of reasons. It's more than just politics. I do think that the governor doesn't want both Wayne County and Detroit, it's two biggest sure. governmental entities uh, in the state. He doesn't want both of those in emergency management at the same time. But there's also the very real uh, concern that the emergency manager law isn't very effective with counties. It's not working. It deals with um, the executive branch and the legislative branch. Well, in counties, particularly like Wayne County, you have other elected officials who contribute mightily to the problem and to the deficit. Right, the sheriff, yeah, the, the prosecutor, office. clerk, uh, on and on. Bob Fucano controls just one third of Wayne County's budget, and that's all an emergency manager would control. Would have control. Would still right. have to say to the to Benny Napoleon, "Hey, you got to quit overspending." Kim Worthy, you got to quit overspending. And what's to say an EM is going to be any more effective than Fucano has? And how important is it, though, uh, before you go into Wayne County, to do what you can to stabilize the situation in the city of Detroit? It seems that you know Wayne County is going to be a very big fish to fry down the road. Get Detroit settled, see if it works, and if you actually have something, a track record, that people can point to and say, you know, this has been effective, then you might have a little bit more political clout to go after right. the Wayne County problem. Because right now, I mean, Wayne County, let's be honest, they're, they're like the Detroit Lions, a lot of self-inflicted wounds here. <laughs> the jail project comes to mind. They don't often think these things through, and they fight amongst themselves quite a bit. They need to get that stabilized, and there are certain things they could do that would at least make them look like they know what they're doing. Well, it does seem being. like Wayne County is different from Detroit in the sense that there's there's revenue to be gotten there, right? It's sure. not completely unstable. You have healthy parts of Wayne right. County that 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 should be uh, uh, contributing more to the to the county going forward. Why isn't that? Why isn't well, that they hard? still haven't recovered the money they've lost when the property values plummeted. But right. property values coming back up, revenues coming in. But Wayne County still <clears throat> has not restructured top to bottom. Uh, the, the way that way, the cities have yeah, in Wayne yeah, County. Exactly. Most of the cities have restructured their, their operations right. in some capacity. The county has yet to do it. And, and maybe that's sort of the last canary in the coal mine, you know? Yeah. Uh, when, and when the, final, the county finally, when it reaches their level, 
they have to restructure, maybe that's when you get a sense that they're actually tackling things. And you still have inept leadership in the county. Well, say, I mean, you know, we're, we're coming into an election year uh, uh, at the county level, both the commission and the executive. Are we going to see changes there? Or? I don't know. I mean, it, it it's hard for me to think that Bob Ficano could run for re-election on a platform that says, well, I wasted $140 million on a jail that's never going to get finished. I squandered another $70 million on a horse racing track and on the Guardian building. Yeah, you love um, to bring up that horse track. You well, bring that up every show. Well, <laughs> for God's sake, we bring it up. a race horse and track today. <laughs> They're closing all over the country. And Bob thought, well, let's put $35 million of your money in it. Oh, How and, do you by run the way, for without, election on without that Without casino gaming in the place, without which is what right. all the track yeah, operators right. say they need to survive in this right. day and age. Right. Yeah, that that is a big problem. I totally agree with you on, on the quality of the leadership, not to mention there's still a lot of investigations going on within yeah. the county. Yeah, so we don't know I mean, where that's all headed. This right? cloud that is hanging over the uh, the Ficano administration is so significant. Uh, him getting reelected, but the weird thing is, I don't see anybody that's really stepping up saying, I want this job. Well, you have uh, Phil Cavanaugh oh, says he's running for out. sure. Kevin McNamara says he's running. Bill uh, Wild, who's the mayor of Westland, says he's in. I think one of Ficano's hopes, in fact, is that there's so many people uh, on the Democratic side that uh, they don't get enough votes. To, it's to, to a very be. old Wayne County political tech, uh, tactic. You load up the place um, <laughs> with Irish <laughs> names and Polish <laughs> names and you split the vote split the a dozen ways and you're the incumbent and you walk through. Um, I would hope the Republicans uh, see the opportunity they here. They should take a shot. And have a good nominee lined up because it's hard for me to believe one-on-one -on -one Ficano could beat anybody. So does Livonia, Northville, Plymouth, places like that show up in large enough numbers to elect a Republican? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and plus you'd have to you'd have to count on the rest of Wayne County saying we don't want any more of this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we also saw last week the state decide that it's going to go along with the the national quote unquote fix uh, mm -hmm. to the healthcare uh, situation and and allow people to keep the plans that they had at least through the next year. But then we saw Blue Cross the same day say, you know what? Well, we're not doing that. Um, uh, we got about two minutes, but that's that seems a very significant decision. Well, and I think as goes Blue Cross, go yeah, the rest of Michigan, rest of the right? companies and say, you know what? It's market, it's too right. late for us to go back and do this. And there aren't enough people who have had their plans canceled for it to be economically worthwhile for them to reoffer those policies, especially when they're in a situation where they can make more money off these same customers now. I think they'll take the money. Well, there's 800,000 people. That's not an insignificant Or 225, number. depending I, who you talk to. Well, I mean, the, the, numbers, they, the neighbors are the individual thousand. And But it doesn't matter because it is too late. They've, they've made the changes. Uh, they've changed the policies to go back would add a tremendous amount of expense that's going to get passed on to consumers. Yeah. When Obama said, well, I'm not bailing out you um, insurance companies for this, I mean, who's he kidding? They're just going to pass on, as they are now, all of these costs to their policy. So, but holders. what's the long-term fix? If this is not the fix, then what, then what are we supposed for to do? For those people who lost yeah. their policy, right. I think you've got to do two things. You've got to you've got to attack cost of, of health care, which is something the you Affordable still haven't done. Care Act didn't even begin to do. And you're going to have to sit down uh, and do a comprehensive fix to Obamacare. That means all stakeholders come and say, what did we do wrong and how do we get it right? Okay. But I think we're past the point of no return on this. We'll never go back to what we had before. We can't before. go back no, before. We've we just got to fix it. We've destroyed that system. That system. We, got. we can so. do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> there we go. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> what did John Stewart say? You, know, you said, yes, we can. Yes. Uh, not, well, I'm going to make mistakes <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right, guys. We'll... Uh, We'll continue this at another time. All right. Okay, <laughs> thanks. That'll do it for us on My Week from our Midtown studios. Check us out at myweek.org and find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For all of us at Detroit Public Television, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next week. Business Leaders for Michigan is dedicated to making Michigan a top 10 state for jobs, personal income, and economic growth. Learn more at businessleadersformichigan.com. Funding is also provided by Delta.